Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're doing Advent of Code 2022, Day 16. Uh, I'm not even going to try to say the name of this. Um, it is going to be a little bit different. I'm not hitting this one fresh right now. I actually solved it this morning. Um, I had some time with my laptop, not near this computer, in a place I couldn't record, um, but I did work on the problem and solve it. So I'm going to go back through and try to take through the steps. Um, this was a really hard one. Um, frankly, if you'd watched me solve the whole thing, it was kind of had a lot of floundering. So um, hopefully this video will be a little, little bit better, and I'll call out some of my... Uh, mistakes, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. Um, there's a lot of story here, like usual, but <clears throat> in conclusion, I'm going to get a list of valves. Um, I always start at valve AA. Each valve has the potential that if you open it, there might be some stuff that comes out of it at a flow rate, um, but a lot of them are zero, we'll see. Um, and then each valve has a, you can, from A, you can go to D, I, and B. From B, you can go back to A. You know, all the, all, if you can go from A to B, you can also go from B to A. B to A. The tunnels are all bidirectional. Um, and uh, so the, you can kind of sort of map out this graph. Um, at the beginning, all the valves are closed. And it takes one, so you start with 30 minutes. It takes one minute to walk to another, to, so from go to A to B, for example, takes one minute. Um, to open a valve also takes one minute. So if we walk from A to B, now now we're from 30 minutes down to 29. Uh, at B, we decide to open B. Now there's 28 minutes left, and we're going to get 13, I don't know, pressures, points, whatever it's called, uh, pressures uh, per minute for 28 minutes, as long as that stays open. Assuming we don't close it. I don't, I don't know why we would ever close one. Um, and so we have to decide how to walk through these tunnels, opening valves, in such a way that we get the most total pressure released. And so, um, for example, like opening E doesn't look like it'll give us much value, even if we're standing at E, we might, be, we might want to keep going past E because it's only gonna be three per minute. Um, so uh, <clears throat> they have examples here, but that's fine. We'll skip through. Um, and like I said, I have already solved this. Let me skip part two as well. Weird. Let's see. Oh, um, somehow I was logged out. Uh, okay, so we'll we'll stop right here at the end of part one, and uh, let's jump over and do some coding. So we can do a Gen Day script here on day sixteen to go ahead and get a hold of uh, my input and a, a stub. Um, I go into this. The, well, there's a link to this in my repo in the uh, notes below, as well as I talk about the script in detail uh, in day one. Um, nothing too exciting here, except for we will note. Um, let's do this. Let's do cat input.text grep rate equals zero. Uh, I guess we do grep minus v rate equals zero into a word count minus l. So there's 15 that don't have zero out of 57 lines. So the vast majority of these are zero. Um, so I guess it's important just to note that. We'll take advantage of that when we code. Um, so let's start. The first thing we're going to need to do is parse these lines. So if we, uh, Come here, we're going to need some structures, right? Well, I guess we'll figure those out as we go. We'll do four line in lines. <clears throat> now, for each line, we'll say tokes equals line dot splits on a space. Uh, we'll say valve. Let's go ahead and grab one of these uh, top line here. Put this here. Okay. So our valve name is going to be tokes sub one. Right, because value value is zero. That's one. Um, we also want to get the we want to record the flow, like how much the flow rate, right? So we can say um, flows equals and make this a dictionary. And so now we can say flows sub valve equals, and that's going to be tox so zero one two three four sub four, and then we're going to split that on the equal sign. And then we're going to take the first one, or the second one, really. And then we're going to want to cut off the last character, because we want to get rid of this semicolon. I guess we could actually, let's do it nicer. We can do a strip like that. <clears throat> and we want that actually to be an integer. So we'll put, come back here like that. Now we have our flow stored. Um, the other thing we need to do is need, we need to like have a map of the uh, array of the other place we can go. So I'm going to call this like. Uh, uh, I guess we'll call it maps equals, and we'll make another dictionary. And we can say maps of a valve is going to be equal to, and this is going to be a list of all the places we could go. So we're going to say, 
Uh, P for T in tox. Let's see. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we want like 9 and beyond. So we'll say 9 like that. And now we don't just want T. We want to make sure we remove any uh, trailing commas. So we'll say dot strip like that. Looks good. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and run this. We'll say uh, Python day 16 input. And I'm going to do it with a minus I so I can play with it after it runs. Uh, invalid literal. Okay, so we didn't get. Oh, it's not a comma, it's a semicolon. Save that, try again. Okay, so if we now do like flows, we get each of these with a flow. We could do like um, F for flow, F in flows, if F. That should give us, they should get rid of all the non zero ones. Um, so if flows sub F is greater than zero. There we go, but we can do a land on that and see that it's hopefully 15. Yeah, cool, okay. Um, we can look at our maps. Um, interesting, it's putting a, we gotta get rid of that new line. Let's see, we can probably add that in there. And we called that maps, and there we go. So now we can see, um, we, we can just check out like maps of RU is YH and ID. Perfect, feel pretty happy with that. So we look, we look good there. Um, and get rid of some extra spaces here. So now we want to write a, write a recursive function that's going to solve. And what we're going to do is going to walk. So let's come down here and we'll do def solve. And it, what, we, what we're going to do is we'll take in our posi current position, the current time, the current uh, opened, the list of opened valves. We'll need, is, and we'll, that's what we're going to need. And so the idea here is if we think about like if there's no time left, well, then we're just going to get nothing additional. So that's easy to know. If there's one second, one minute left, we can figure out like, oh, well, this is whatever we could get in this minute plus whatever we had in the, whatever we get in the remaining minutes. So if there's like five minutes left, it's whatever we can open in this minute plus anything we can open in those later minutes. And so we can kind of use a recursive algorithm to walk that. Um, hopefully this will make some sense. Um, so when we do opened, uh, let's see. Okay, so let's come, we'll, we'll worry about what opened is in just a second here when we call it. Um, so we'll say if time equals zero, so the time isn't done, we'll just return zero because we, at time zero, there's no time left. We can't open anything. We can't get any more pressure released. So we're done. Um, that's easy. So that's our base case. Um, now we can say score equals, let's, let's think of it from, from any given position, we could walk to all of the possible maps, you know, the maps objects, um, there, so we could use our time walking, and we can we can say, actually, let's get rid of score for a second. We'll just map this out. We can say like, uh, let's see how exactly we're we going to say this. We can say solve. Let's see. So we'll say next for next in maps some position. So we get this. This will be like all of the places we could walk, um, and there's not usually too many. But I mean, we can have like up to five, right? Um, and for each of those, we are going to solve. Where the position is n, the time is time minus one, and opened will not have changed. We don't, we didn't change anything, right? So we can take like open there. So now we're going to have solved all of those. We'll get we'll solve all those, and we can say, well, we want the maximum of that, right? We don't need, uh, we we just want to know the, the most. So we can put that around here, like that, and so we can say score equals. So the maximum we can get by walking is going to be whatever this returns. Um, now the other thing, in addition to walking, we could open up something. So we can say like if flows sub position is greater than zero. So if it makes sense to open it, right? Like is, does we wouldn't we aren't going to try to open it if it's not zero. Otherwise, that's just wasting our time and cycles. Um, and position not in opened. So we haven't opened it already because we can't. We don't open it again. Um, then we can say like new opened list equals, well, let's just, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll, we're going to come back and make this a little bit for the sake of like following what I'm doing. We can say opened dot add position, and then we can say score equals max. And we're going to do score or, uh, oh man, am I using score? Oh yeah, no, I'm going to solve. Okay, that's fine. Solve. And now the solve is going to be. Uh, position is going to not change, so it'll still be position. Um, the, let's see, 
position doesn't change. The time will be time minus one. And we'll say we'll pass opened in here. And I think that is, oh, no. So the score is not that because if we stand here for this minute and we open something, not only do we get the score of whatever else we can do in the future, we also get a score. We're going to get, we're going to get time minus one times flows of position, right? So if we stand, if we are, there's a few things we can do, right? We can walk to other positions, which will take our whole time. We'll add us no current value, but it'll, we'll then, you know, we can get the score of whatever happens beyond that. Or we can stand in our current spot and spend the time and earn this much pressure plus whatever we're going to do in the future. Um, and so whichever of those is greater, the score here or the score from doing that, we will want to keep. Um, and then at the end here, we'll just return score. And so effectively, what we're doing here is we're um, going to walk through and try all possibilities, try all paths. Now, if I ran this right now, it would run forever. I mean, this is not something I, this is not something I struggled with when I was solving it the first time. Um, it just it wouldn't work, right? Because um, <clears throat> we're going to just try way too many things. But what we can use is anytime you have a recursive algorithm that might call the same thing over and over again, we're going to take advantage of the fact that if I'm at a current position at a current time with a current valve state, the answer is going to be the same no matter what, and that that's always going to be the case. And so there's a there's a func there's a thing we can use. We can do from func func tools import cache. And then we can decorate this with cache. Like that, I believe. And so what this says is if the arguments here are exactly the same as they were on a previous call, just return the answer. Just store that in memory. And you know, they use the example, it might be easier to follow on the page. I brought it up here. Um, for factorial, right? So factorial is going to be n factorial is going to be n times n factor n minus one factorial, right? So it's like if you have n factorial five, it's going to be five times four times three times two times one, um, which happens to be five times four factorial. Well, so in this example, when it computes factorial of ten, there's no cache result, so it's going to call fact, you know, factorial of ten, factorial of nine, eight, seven, all the way down. But then when it calls factorial of five, it's already calculated factorial of five, so it's stored that in the cache. Um, and so it just pulls it right out. Doesn't need to do any calculation. Uh, when it does 12, it's going to have to call 12. It's going to call 11. But then when it gets to 10, it already knows the answer. So it's done. It's just, you know, and so this is going to save us a ton of cycles. Uh, there's a downside here. And that is all of these things have to be hashable, which means I can't, I need to track my opened thing here, but I need to do it in a hashable way. And so what we're going to do is we're going to define opened as a frozen set. Um, and a frozen set is a set that is, doesn't, isn't going to change. And so that's fine. So if we're all, you know, so we can come in, we can set, or I guess we can even just do like, so we do solve, let's, down here we'll do solve. Uh, we're going to start at AA. We are going to uh, start with 30 minutes and we are going to start with, I can probably just do frozen set like that and start, our, start ourselves a new set, right? Um, but what happens when I need to change it, right? Because so down here, not this fine, I'm not changing, I'm just passing it in so it can still be frozen, but here I need to add something. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say new opened equals uh, set of opened. And so that's gonna take opened and turn it into a set. We can say new opened, add position. And then down here we can say solve, uh, I guess we can just do it this way. Well, I don't wanna mess with, op yeah, we'll say, um, We'll say frozen set new opened like that. And so now we're going to pass, we're going to take our frozen set. We're going to turn it into a set. We're going to add something to it and then we're going to turn it back into a frozen set. So we're not going to be doing this too often. So that's, that's fine. Even though that's a little bit expensive. I think we're actually, I think we just may have been made ourselves finished here. Let's see. Um, we don't want the dash I there. Let's run this to see how long it takes. And in less than two seconds, we got 22, uh, 2,330. And if we jump over here, uh, that was our answer. So we got it correct. Um, just for, just to show you the power of this, if I come here and do this, that took two seconds, right? If I run this without that, it's going to run indefinitely. It won't finish. Um, I mean, it might finish in days, but it's not, I mean, it's not, not a useful solution. I don't know if you can hear my computer revving up in the background. 
um, as it's trying to process all this, but the cache is doing real good work for us here. So um, let's, let's keep it in. Okay, uh, part two description. So you're worried that even with the optimal approach, we don't have enough pressure to relief. What if you got one of the elephants to help you? It will take four minutes to teach the elephant how to open the right valves in the right order, leaving you with 26 minutes to execute your plan with the two of you working together. Um, so they show it as like, you know, minute one, you move to valve two, the elephant moves to va uh, valve DVD, or II. Uh, in minute two, you move to JJ, the elephant opens a D. So basically you're, you're working together at the same time. Um, what's important to remember here is in our previous approach, we showed all possible combinations. We didn't do anything greedy. We didn't say, if you get to a valve, make sure you open it because that's obviously gonna be optimal. We tried all things. And so the set where I walk over valves, assuming the elephant will come right behind me and open them up, we, we checked those. We just didn't keep those because they weren't the highest, but we checked them all the way end to end. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an, we're gonna actually just assume we, can, we don't have to do me, elephant, me, elephant, me, elephant. We can do my full path, even if it doesn't feel optimal by itself, and then map all the elephant's paths on top of that. And it's going to make it take longer, but it's not going to make, make it take prohibitively longer. Um, so let's see what that looks like. We'll come up here and we'll say LE waiting. LE wait equals false. So, um, <clears throat> and then we can come down here and say, if le wait uh, return solve the elephant starts at a there's 26 minutes uh, opened will be the same and false I guess we don't even need the false because that's the default um, so what we've just done is we said if we get if the if we call this with le wait if we get to time zero and the elephants with waiting we basically just solve the problem again so every time we get to time zero, we're going to solve the problem again. And this time with the elephant going back through and opening up ones. And it doesn't actually matter the order because we're going to try everything. Um, and so we just need to update our other solve calls. So this will be uh, LA wait. We're just going to pass in whatever it currently is. And here, LA wait, save that. And I think see if, if we did it right um, we're effectively going to be done if we just come down here and do solve AA 26 minutes frozen set and true now this does take a little bit longer to run I'll probably skip through it um, I'll speed this up for you but we'll keep talking once it's done Cool. So it's it's finishing up now. You can see it's uh, it's interesting. It's actually hanging a little bit. I think that's all the cache unloading because the cache was taking up so much memory. Um, I think that it has to unload and figure it out. But we've still got an answer twenty six seventy five, and that does match our number. So we actually we did solve it. Um, so uh, again, I can't I can't go over how important this cache is. Anytime you're making recursive calls that aren't that are you know the the result will be determinative based on the input, you want to be thinking about this cache function. Um, and then um, just, you know, try to wrap your head around the fact that like, because we tried all possible path, like in, let's pretend like I skip over a valve that I really want open and I walk past it. Well, in part one, that's going to be a non-optimal solution. I'm going to get bad. It's not going to rise above, but because I check it with part two where the elephant can then open up that same valve and keep moving, um, that actually does, I, I did check all those bad solutions, and because I checked them, they all of a sudden can become good solutions once you introduce the elephant. So um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, thanks for sticking around till the end, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.